All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And a happy post-Easter, uh, Easter Monday or something. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of cool. All you Easterites, all the people who uh, pour out of one church into the next church, welcome. It's great to have you here. And I think it's, um, I think it's Ramadan. Is it Ramadan coming up? Let me put my credibility glasses on. I believe Ramadan is, um... Maybe somebody can check on Ramadan. Google it. I would have thought that somebody here knew the Ramadan start date. Um, but, um, all right, anyway, the point is, uh, happy Easter and uh, all that Ram- stuff. I think Ramadan is over. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, Ramadan what? 2024 I... began the evening of Sunday, March 10th. Uh-oh. It concludes, oh, it concludes Tuesday, April 9th. So we're in Uh-oh. Ramadan process right now. Yes, apparently it didn't work out. Okay. Um, well, uh, listen, I hope everybody had a good Ramadan anyway. <laughs> How do we get off on Ramadan? I don't even yeah. mention Ramadan on this show. Why are you yelling? And all of a sudden, it's all we can talk about. Anyway. I blame e- you. Yeah, I blame you. Easter was... Uh, I blame you. Uh, all right, let's get going. Easter was uh, an interesting holiday, and we'll get to the weird differences between uh, the greetings from the former president and the current president. I will touch on that. Also, uh, I will mention... It had to happen, and it had to happen at some point, but boy, it happened quickly. The curtain pulled back on the truth social linked stock that is Donald Trump's. It has tumbled, kids. Yeah, it is. uh, I know. I know. It's going to be. What? I'm just saying if you've cashed out your 401ks, you all want a piece of DJT. Never Didn't been anything call- like this. You may Didn't have to you hang call on. that? You knew this was going to happen. That's exactly right. Yeah. We said there is no there there. And sure enough, I'll give you a few more details, but essentially you need to know simply that uh, it's fallen off a cliff today as the financials have been revealed and the fact that, you know, it's not a business. Now, if you want to buy into Truth Social and DJT the same way you buy into the rallies and you buy into the cheering and the call and response and all that crap and how you, you know, rent a bus and a bunch of your friends go to the Capitol and you, you know, create mayhem, well, that's your own world. That's it. That's part of the cult. But I'm just suggesting if you put money in hoping that you are going to get more money out, like many other projects related to DJT, mm, it ain't going to happen. Uh, Kamish is here and Albert, thank you. Uh, so is Kim, as you just heard. Kim, how are you? Uh, Kamish, I wonder if you can give me a sense of what happened over the weekend in Mark's Madness, please. Yeah, so, um, there won't be a repeat champion this year as Kim's drop, chit, 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 took down number one seed Good Day, sir. So. Unbelievable. Oh. Chit, chit, chit. Un- it's unbelievable. I-, I really thought that. Good Day, sir! I'll tell you something. I know I said I thought Chit 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 could take the whole tournament, and I really do mean that. But I also felt as though there was a chance that uh, some other drops would um, would outpace Chit Chit Chit. But Chit 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 looks unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like next year it's going to probably be a, a way higher seed, especially yeah, how it's exactly. right now. Yeah, exactly. Chit 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 on uh, on to the next round. Good day, and the people sir. let me so down this weekend as well. Producer No Idea did advance over Oprah Woods. So. Oh my! And that is whoever is producing that this is thing the drop. has no idea what, what they're doing. That one over the weekend over uh, what? And, what? And I'll tell you something. To me, that's the biggest upset, alongside the thirty percent. Thirty percent has done very well. Is but I will. I had what? I'll tell you just honestly. I had what to win the whole thing. So um, I just feel Oprah's what is so what? so strong. Yeah. But. Um, but this is the weirdest. Uh, Whoever is producing I don't this remember, thing has no idea what I don't remember doing. that drop doing really well in past years, Albert. You know what I mean? Me neither. So I, 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 I'm beginning to think that people are out to get me. Or, or <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, I also have some uh, questions related to Mark's Madness to answer. So maybe I should uh, 
I should get to those, uh, or we should open the uh, voting on this Mark's Madness for the hour. Then I can answer questions. That might be the better way to go, Kamish. That's, yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, without any further delay, we do it. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. Only my favorite thing on earth. That's right. Mark's Madness. This hour, you will vote in the chat for either. Why are you yelling? Oh, or. Seriously, what the. Oh, my God. You can only vote for one. Why are you yelling? Or. Seriously, what the. One goes on to the next round in an upset ridden tourney. Let's go! Oh my God, Albert, I'm delighted. I'm puzzled. I'm excited. I'm thrilled at the way Mark's Madness is going. And now I have questions that have come in from people who are fans of Mark's Madness, or at least observers of Mark Ma- Mark's Madness. And let me uh, address a couple of those. And uh, maybe you, as a. Uh, commissioner can weigh in on this as well because i've received a lot of positive letters yeah well this is about um mark's madness and uh, by the way we come if those of you are new uh, need a little primer we come from a radio station so originally this crew albert you see kim you see uh from kgo radio in san francisco we were a big talk radio station that folded up and it's now become some syndicated thing. They basically took everybody's making any money and they got rid of everybody, all of us, and uh, we brought it over to YouTube. So that's where we've been, and we've we've taken the franchises that we used to do on the show, and we do them over here. So one of those franchises is Mark's Madness, and this is the uh, correspondence I got that uh, asked a really good question. You kind of lose track of... You lose track of um, of how many people don't know necessarily what happens in Mark's Madness, and I won't sure. spend a whole lot, a lot of time on this. By the way, you got the um, Rod of Equity and uh, Mercy uh, picture, Albert. I forwarded on to you from Bill Mann, who's the uh, former media writer. Uh, uh, let me let me take a look. Okay, it's a, this is a you know. I, I can now I understand why the producer whoever is yeah. producing this thing yeah. has no idea what well, they're doing. I did send it three days ago, so there's no reason yet. I do uh, have it. Yep, it's okay. Here. You got it. All right, <laughs> uh, Bill Mann, who sent uh, this picture of the Rod of Equity and Mercy, which is uh, which is pretty cool. And we haven't used the Rod of Equity and Mercy in in quite some time. But uh, receive the Rod of Equity and there it and is, mercy. and there it is in the background, as I believe that is Charles making his first appearance um, since the announcement of his cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Bill Mann sent me that with the rod of equity and mercy in the background. I mean, it's quite the... um, You receive the rod of Mm -hmm. equity and mercy. Yeah, what's that, Yours is prettier. Mine is prettier. Um, Many people say that, and it's true. And (laughs) I will um, uh, perhaps... Mark, your rod is much better than that rod. Perhaps I'll whip it out. uh, Please, if you could. Um, Bill also asks, I'm a little confused about your Mark's Madness. In this one respect, if you lose a round, does that mean you take the drop off the air and the ones who win stay on the air for another year? I've never heard you explain exactly what it means if you lose... Mm -hmm. Uh, head to head. So let me uh, address this. Uh, Mark's Madness is exactly like March Madness. March Madness, it's a bunch of schools playing basketball against each other, as you know, and only one wins a game, and the one that wins a game in the tournament goes on to the next round of the tournament. Now, the school that lost doesn't close down and they don't stop being a school. They just don't play in the tournament anymore. In fact, they don't even stop playing basketball anymore. They're still playing, but they don't play in the tournament any longer. Mark's Madness is exactly the same. The drops never go away. They're still there, but only the drop that wins will go on the next round of the tournament. So that's what's going on. We're doing it. And so ultimately, there will only be one winner, one drop that will have survived the tournament and made it all the way to the end. That drop, uh, it won't be the only drop we play, but it'll be the only drop that wins Mark's Madness. So hopefully that explains it. And uh, What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for that. Um, I also got um, 
new Patreon over the weekend. I love when uh, people sign up for Patreon or re-up their Patreon or increase their Patreon, and I'm always there to send you a message personally to thank you because I am truly from the bottom of my uh, shallow heart. I am, uh, I, I am so grateful. We only exist because of you, and Elwood is the uh, latest, and uh, thank you, Elwood. It's a, a big shout-out. Big shout-out. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, $35 member, so that's really cool. Uh, I say member, member of the, our community. You know, we're mm -hmm. basically a... Um, we're basically a PBS type NPR setup. So if you like this, the way we stay on the air is this way. And Carlos, uh, thank you for throwing us a 10 spot on Patreon and becoming a monthly donor. And Very a big nice. shout out to big you. Big shout out. And there, as I mentioned, Louis says uh, yep. for a $2 super chat, chit, 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 on to the next round. Good day, sir. Yeah. Pamela Kirby. What up, Pamela Kirby? Big, big shout, shout out. out. Thank you for the five spot. Wow, it's a lot of um, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of stuff going on. A lot of yeah, a lot of love. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Well, I hope everybody had a good weekend. And as I say, um, it was a, a weird weekend uh, for Easter celebrations. I'll get to those in a second. Just to follow up uh, quickly on the Truth Social stock from Donald Trump, it's down over two and a half billion dollars, and that's a that's a lot. And uh, by the way, Mr. President, this isn't an April Fool's joke. Uh, you're done on this uh, Truth. So I mean. It, now, he may still somehow, he'll pull something out of this company. And as I've told you before, uh, and there it is graphically displayed for you. Uh, I've told you before, this is a way to buy a piece of Donald Trump. So if you love Donald Trump, this is your guy. This is a way to feed his coffers. It's also a way to, let's face it, uh, open up different avenues of support financially for him that might even include uh, foreign donors or back room ways to, and I'm talking in this case about the SPAC, you know, the, the shell company that preceded the IPO. There's a bunch of money that's fed into that, and that money could come from anywhere. So uh, I'm just saying there's a lot that's sort of um, murky about this mm -hmm. deal before it even hits the market. But now that it hits the market, it's publicly traded. So we learn all of this stuff uh, as stockholders or just as onlookers about this company. So again, the social media company uh, stock mm, shares fell precipitously. This is from Forbes, and precipitously is a ding word. Yeah. Um, Forbes goes on to say the company revealed its latest financial results predictably well below what a typical multi-billionaire, multi-billion dollar company would deliver. In other words, the company is absolutely overvalued. We said that from the start. Everybody said it from the start. It wasn't just us. Trump's media stock, DJT, tanked 25%, trading at about $46 a share now, roughly 40% drop from the $79 peak. And uh, Trump owns 78 and a half million shares, about 57% of all the outstanding shares. And um, he had his stake then slide, if you do the arithmetic, from 6.25 billion to 3.64 billion. Again, from 6.25 to 3.64. I mean, you will notice that many billions headed out of your portfolio. And this look free fall. Graph. What's that? Look at the graph. I mean, it just tanked. Yeah. 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 So uh, again, once the um, you know everybody's uh, in the Trump cult, mm -hmm. everybody in the Trump cult is horny for Trump. Any way they can help him, they'll buy his merch, they'll buy the sneakers, they'll and anything they can do, and they'll buy the stock. But um, uh, in this case, increasingly, uh, the company where there is really no there there that they just don't have the business and they don't have the future business or the potential business uh, you're likely to see it continue to tumble now somebody's pointing out hey mark all the stocks are done yeah this is andrew peters who is <laughs> andrew peters is uh, alternately a and, and and love you andrew peters and i was waiting for my easter uh, invite but um he is uh, at best a i would call him a provocateur uh, at worst, Andrew Peters is a troll. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so uh, you're, but he exists in that nether region between either. Okay, but anyway, mm -hmm. in this case, he makes a point. Ugh, all stocks are down today, Mark, can go way back up tomorrow. Of course it can. And you know what, Andrew? 
I'm going to speak to you personally if I could. Uh, I think you should take your own advice and you ought to get all the money you can, <laughs> borrow it if you have to, and buy it on the dip. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> buy that DJT. Andrew's going to be, be richer than any of us when he buys this stock on the dip. If ever there was a buying opportunity, Andrew, with this Donald Trump truth social related stock it is now kid get in there and buy 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 i don't care about any other money discretionary or otherwise get in there and do your thing baby we believe in him we believe in him you believe in him too andrew you know double it down exactly yeah the mark thompson show all right it was easter weekend quickly i just i mean it is a worth noting that um a uh, couple of things happened. Uh, there was a huge, uh, we're here in California and in Northern California near Big Sur, which is maybe one of the most beautiful places. It's certainly one of the most beautiful places on earth. Maybe the, the most beautiful place on earth. But I mean, it's right up there. Is uh, 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 There's a road, right? There's this uh, Highway, Highway 1. one. It's, mm -hmm. it's an incredible road. And they, uh, I guess a bunch of the road crumbled away over the weekend and they had to close it. 1,600 people were trapped because there was no way to proceed. Uh, I don't know if we have um, uh, pictures or, or I don't even, I, the pictures are, oh, actually, I think, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. There it is. Um, that's what it looks like. And so they were, I believe, taking people by convoy. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you for the picture. Uh, thank you so much for the picture. They were taking people by con by convoy. Is that what they were yeah, doing, Yeah, they do. That they're doing two convoys a day, 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. And they'll, if you must be there, if you live there or what have you, they will lead you through. But you have to prove that you have a reason to go in. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's um, it's definitely of concern, and increasingly, roads in that area uh, are being affected by these kinds of slides. And uh, there it is. Yeah, they had some you know. rain over the weekend, and it just the cliffside underneath the roadway washed away. And this isn't the first time that this has happened on this portion or near this portion of Highway One. It seems like with landslides, with portions of the um, of the hillside giving way underneath the highway and then wildfires it seems like a constant rotating series of closures for highway one it's it's hard to live out there yeah it really is um beautiful uh, but you you know you don't know well, when you're going to be stranded right yeah kim is right i mean this is not their first uh rodeo with this it's been happening all too much and uh Look, there's more rain expected, I think, this week, isn't there? I mean, this is not the last. I think there's another wet regime coming for the weekend or toward the weekend, I believe. But um, maybe we'll get Spencer back. By the way, Spencer, Spencer Christian, who is the legendary weather guy, formerly of Good Morning America, now on in the Bay Area, he became one of our... Uh, Patreon supporters. So oh, that's and, nice. Yeah, isn't that what? Uh, what? I know he's both contributing to the show with regular visits and that way. But anyway, wow. we'll get him. Yeah, we'll get him back. Um, well, there was a data leak over. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. You, let's do the Easter thing. Can you run a little bit of it, Albert? What, what did the former president uh, post on Easter? Something warm, something beautiful, something that reminds something. me um, of God's great creation something bibly maybe yeah something bibly he is he's yeah. pitching the bibles now yeah. so you'd think he would be able to crack open some scripture maybe this is from let's uh, start this hour uh with president biden's easter sunday message it was a solemn message that read this jill and i send our warmest wishes to christians around the world celebrating easter sunday easter reminds us of the power of hope and the promise of Christ's resurrection. As we gather with loved ones, we remember Jesus' sacrifice. We pray for one another and cherish the blessing of the dawn of new possibilities. And with wars and conflict taking a toll on innocent lives around the world, we renew our commitment to work for peace, security, and dignity for all people. From our family to yours, Happy Easter. And may God bless you. There you go. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, 
Unfortunately, now I have to compare that to uh, a Republican Beautiful. front runner, basically, Donald Trump, who spent another religious holiday posting on Truth Social 77 times, sometimes unhinged, sometimes nonsensical, mm. lots of all caps, definitely very mean. On Easter, the presumptive 2024 Republican nominee went after his perceived enemies all day among his many posts, one uh -huh. in all caps. Looks like a big chunk. Blasting the, quote, evil and sick prosecutors looking to hold him accountable for his alleged crimes. He also shared two far-right news articles, one titled The Crucifixion of Donald Trump <laughs> and the other calling him a miracle and the chosen one sent by God. If you don't think this is a cult, you might want to consider opening your mind a little bit here. In another post, Trump claimed his Florida home and club is worth as much as $1.8 billion. And this one, highlighting a poll that claims he would defeat former First Lady Michelle Obama in a general election <laughs> matchup. Wow. This guy really needed an Easter did, celebration to go to. Joe Biden in a very dangerous, ugly fashion. That was on Friday, I believe. Yeah, he posted a kind of torture uh, picture of Biden, hogtied. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, uh, I don't know. He's a... Uh... God bless America. <laughs> right. The end. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, very, really. How very it, Christian of him. It's beyond rude. Mm. I, I just don't know how, you know. I mean, it's so, it, it so doesn't befit the office to which he aspires mm -mm. Uh, the presidency it's just a brutal it, it's remarkable but that smack talking and you know if you just want to own the libs the way like an andrew peters does or many of the other um supporters of donald trump you love anything that is the ruder the better in, in a sense i mean on some level but man i i think it rubs enough of the electorate the wrong way that those who are aware of it anyway uh you lose them you lose them and you lose their vote i think you know we'll see between now and november that's a lot of real estate to cover but wow um anyway that's what he was doing and it was uh i mean he's just serving up the most toxic posts imaginable and uh, they seem to be landing with his people but as i say i don't know how they'll land with everybody else the mark thompson show there was a as you know, a huge, or you're likely aware, a huge data leak that includes personal information of 73 million current and former customers of AT&T. And they're doing an investigation into the source of it. But they released this information over the weekend that the data was on the dark web for two uh, weeks before it was discovered by people who are associated with trying to stop data leaks at AT&T. It does contain information. Again, this is for all of you who are AT&T users. Information like account holders' social security numbers. Uh, it's not known whether data originating from AT&T or one of its vendors was the thing that actually produced this big chunk on the dark web. They don't have any evidence of an unauthorized access to their systems, they say. This is AT&T, but it is everybody associated with this had accounts with AT&T. The data seemed to have been from 2019 or earlier, they say, and it does not appear to contain financial information or specifics about call history. The company said the leak shows, again, 7.6 million current account holders and then 65.4 million former account holders being affected. So I mean, that is uh, that is serious. And by the way, uh, in that spirit, I will tell you, that my credit card was jacked over the weekend. No. And it's kind of wild what happened. Uh, I'll just tell you, tell you quickly that I got these charges for the DMV. And I thought, this is odd. I mean, unless it's one of those, they have my uh, card on file and they're simply, you know, um, you know recharging the card for uh, the registration for the next year, that kind of thing. Uh, then I got another charge in the DMV and then, you know, some associated kind of smaller charges. And the DMV charges are about 400 bucks. 
Then I get a, and I'm thinking, eh, like, and I, on Monday, I got to follow up on this, whatever. It just wasn't quite panicking yet. Then I get a charge for $200 at a restaurant that is in West Covina, California, which is like way in the Inland Empire outside of Los Angeles, maybe, you know, an hour. It would be like, you know, from Danville to San Francisco distance kind of. Um Anyway, um, I don't know if that quite works. Morgan Hill to San Francisco, maybe. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the point is that I'm thinking, hmm, that's weird. Like, I don't know why I would get that charge. Then I got two charges for $60 at a bakery also in that area. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, I, you know, game is, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm thick, but I'm not that thick. I know what's going on here. So I pick up the phone and I, uh, of course, freeze the card, uh, you know, cancel the card. And then... I call the restaurant, okay? So this is a $200 charge. Maybe you'd remember it. So they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got it right here in the system. So I got the guy's name, and I got uh, this fake email address that he put together, but it's very similar to my email address, and then his fake or real phone number. I don't think... You think the phone number is real or fake, honey? What do you think? Uh, Courtney is, you know... um, Courtney was here the whole time, but it was interesting. So we tracked now. So I've got the guy's name, and um, Trevor says, uh, "Sorry, Mark, I found your card, and uh, had some fun." <laughs> right, wow. Exactly. Um, um, I think it was a fake phone number. You think it's a fake phone? Because number. it was. It was close he, to my number. He only number. changed three of the numbers. Yeah. So he's uh, for oh. it, yeah. so if a, a quick inspection. Um, would not reveal that it's fraud. It looks similar. So anyway, that's that's the deal on that. But so AT&T personal data, yeah. my, uh, my credit card breach, they're finding more and more ways to get in, man. And it's really, you know, some of it's old school and some of it is new school. A lot of our information is out there. One of the things that I'm surprised by, I know I gotta quickly go to um, Kim's News and then I've got uh, True Crime Corner. But uh, I'm surprised by how the most guarded information, which used to be your social security number, is now like used for everything. I mean, it's mm-hmm. absolutely a, wouldn't you say, the last four digits of your social, they want it for everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you, want, if you want to get something at Best Buy, they want your last four. I mean, it's crazy. Exactly. And, and if you look at them like, I'm not giving you that, then they look at you like you're nuts. No, they look at you like, well, then we're yeah. not going to do this transaction. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, it's... Um, you know, well, I was I'll... listening to a woman who specializes in scams. Mm. Uh, she was a guest on a show that I was listening to and she was saying like a lot of people fall for um, scammers who call and they say that they're with your bank or your credit card or some institution that you're working with and then they ask you for your entire social and she's like they should never ask you for that it should only be the last four or some other identifying set of numbers or information Mm -hmm. that you have but a lot of people are falling for that that's good information that's you know news you can use have you ever heard that phrase (laughs) <laughs> uh, no, but the show hasn't either, huh, Mark? <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> um, Murphy says, um, "Which one of you is Mark Thompson?" Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's the uh, it's the question. I mean, it was, Which one of you is Mark Thompson? Right, right. It was weird t- t- listening to the email being read back, and it was effectively your email just slightly changed. Yeah, just slightly changed. They're pretty clever, um, man. So yeah, that's very alert. tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we're still on code blue here, so it's not too too bad. But uh, <laughs> I do want to make you aware of it. And uh, all right, Kim's news next. But before we do it, you know we're in the middle, Courtney of. Uh, I know it no. didn't, it didn't uh, work out. I can't. Mark's like I, madness. It didn't work out for Courtney. She had what to go all the way, and I now mean, what is out? How, how does that even happen? You'll vote either for... Uh, why are you yelling? Yeah. Uh, Seriously, what the f***? You'll vote for... Why are you yelling? Or... <laughs> Seriously, what the f***? It's a why are you yelling or serious what the f showdown. Yeah. Ooh. You've got until the end of the hour to yeah. vote one in live and then till midnight in the community section of our YouTube channel. And good luck! Oh my God, I'm so excited, <laughs> Courtney, to have it. You are doing, Courtney, one of the great... Trials and um, yeah, I am true crime stories mm-hmm. that the, in of my life. Yeah, yeah, no, and this it's comes the Klaus von Bülow trial. Yes, and this comes from a friend of the show who recommended, well, didn't recommend, but suggested this story. And I spent 
most of my weekend either watching Reversal of Fortune or listening to various podcasts and TV shows. Re Reversal of Fortune, award-winning film. Yeah. I think uh, I'm, uh, Academy Awards for um, a couple of people associated with, and that was the movie about the Klaus von Bülow trial. I thought I'd remember Klaus von Bülow. I didn't remember 90% of what, mm -hmm. of Courtney to what Courtney told me. So we'll get yes. to that. I'm speaking very hurriedly because I want to get to Kim, and then uh, we'll get to Courtney. Please smash the like button like a boss. Uh, do us a favor. It helps us in the world of YouTube. It also, um, I, okay, I think it just helps us in the world of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee at CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Well, look at that. It's Trans Day of Visibility. Well, it was yesterday on Easter, and now the White House is pushing back against Republican criticism that aimed, uh, aimed at President Biden for marking Sunday as Transgender Day of Visibility. So this day is annually held March 31st, and it coincidentally fell on the same day as Easter this year. They didn't make it Easter. Right. White House Press Secretary <laughs> Karine Jean-Pierre told reporters the president stands for bringing people together and upholding the dignity and freedoms for every American. So the proclamation Sunday, Easter Sunday, sparked outrage from conservatives, including former President Trump, Speaker Mike Johnson, and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. I mean, it's March 31st. It's going to fall on a Sunday sometimes. That's yeah, just eventually, the way it right. It's not like yeah. the regs. You, you said it perfectly. Yeah, look, it's been this way. What has it been? How, was it 15 years? How long has it been out? How long since, has it been around? I think it's since 2009. Anyway, is what yeah, we, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the notion that somehow uh, it mm -hmm. was all of it, uh, it's crazy. But there are many people who won't, uh, you know, those who want to be haters will jump on and go, yeah, how could they do that? I mean, they will not even yeah. look beyond the headline. Yeah. No. Well, we could be see if I can get the picture of you, the map up, uh, the, we are going to be providing support finally, perhaps. Congress could vote to give Ukraine additional aid in its war with Russia when lawmakers return from recess next week. During an interview on Fox News Sunday night in America, House Speaker Mike Johnson said he expects to move an aid package for Ukraine with some important innovations. Johnson has yet to spell out exactly what that package would look like or if he would put the supplemental that passed the Senate last week up for a vote. The supplemental included funding for Ukraine, for Israel, and the Indo-Pacific as well. This could be a pretty big deal. Scientists in South Korea say they have a new world record for the length of time they sustain temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius. So that's seven times hotter than the sun's core during a nuclear fusion experiment. Uh, they say it's an important step forward for this energy technology, nuclear fusion. So they could have reached something. They could have this, you know, this energy source that is what limitless energy. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's, a, it's so exciting on one level. Uh, there have been, I think maybe quiet breakthroughs in that area, but or maybe the, this is how uh, the world ends. The you fusion, don't know. Well, the <laughs> fusion is obviously the safe way to go, the safer way to go, I and mean, the the you know the fission, the violent, um, uh, the violent reaction that we essentially harness for energy is uh, is far more dangerous, and you know fusion is the way to go. The problem is that it's insanely. Uh, energy reliant so the amount of energy required to produce that even that mm -hmm. that heat that we're talking about I, I i look i'm not a scientist as you can tell in this area but i just know that it's a it's an area with such great potential and promise but we may be a long way from being able to harness that potential and promise in woodland hills oopsies a man is behind bars on suspicion of trying to start a fire outside of the fire station <laughs> i mean wow. at least they got there quick it was a very Seems fast like response what? time <laughs> yeah, right. police say on sunday this man was trying to use a diesel fuel pump to spray gasoline onto the fire department he Ooh, wasn't able it's to a wild idea <laughs> but it just might work well it is a wild idea 
but he wasn't able to use the pump without a code. Only one firefighter was at the station at the time. The suspect arrested after he was found at a homeless encampment 500 feet away from the fire station. So that didn't work out for him. Mm. Speaking, though, of the homeless situation, this is uh, Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass, and she is announcing the opening of two more inside safe operations. Yesterday, she said more than 20 people living in a homeless encampment under the 210 freeway in the Shadow Hills area were given shelter. That encampment had been there for four years. Saturday, Bass announced another inside safe operation for homeless people in East Hollywood. That operation also involved more than 20 people being brought inside and offered uh, support services. The SpaceX company will tonight attempt to launch a Falcon 9 rocket from the Santa Barbara County coast. They will be doing this for the fifth time. So SpaceX going at it again. The launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base initially scheduled for last Thursday night had been called off every day because of rain and wind. Uh, The launch is now scheduled for 7.30 p.m. tonight with a backup time at 11.30 p.m. So if you see something funky in the sky, that's what it is. OpenAI is beta testing a new voice cloning tool called Voice Engine. It can generate natural sounding speech from a 15 second audio sample. The company behind ChatGPT says it's taking steps to prevent misuse. Here it comes, Mark Thompson, the voice clone of Mark Thompson's voice. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that would be bad. There's never been anything like no, this. I don't know. Except for the real thing. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, are you ready for the new iPad? Everybody out? Get that new iPad I just going? got the old iPad. There's a oh. new one now? Oh, my there's, God. Now there's a new iPad. Uh, the new iPad may be coming as soon as next month. Several reports indicate updated versions of the iPad Air and the iPad Pro models are on the way after no new updates for a year and a half. Tech watchers are expecting several new and updated features since Apple rarely waits this long to update its product. No. Yeah. All state offices closed today for the observance of Cesar Chavez Day. And that does include some DMV offices and Los Angeles Superior Courtrooms, school districts as well, have the day off. Uh, not my it's kids. It's fantastic. <laughs> my kids had to go to school today. I don't. I guess we don't celebrate that in Sonoma County, where we should, a highly agricultural <laughs> county. Yes, you're right. Cesar Chavez is all about the agricultural And what's uh, going on in Petaluma? Workers. I don't know. Come yeah. on now. Cesar Chavez Day is technically March 31st in honor of the late labor leader's birthday. It has been a state holiday since the year 2000. I have that a means- story, and I'll get to it after the top of the hour, about mm. farmers in California and uh, actually nationwide, but particularly in California, that are up against it. And, I mean, it, it takes in the whole country. It's not just California. They're, they're farmers, as you know, across the um, Central Plains and the Northeast, et cetera. And they're all facing the same problem. And I will share it with you after the top of the hour. Oh, that's... I mentioned it because of Cesar Chavez, that's all. Yeah. Can't wait to hear about that. Uh, The last story that I will say before I talk about before we get to uh, True Crime Corner is I guess a lot of people are watching this movie, the Roadhouse movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, yeah. Last name. Wow. Look at him. Uh, Yeah. A lot of people. The remake of, of the cult favorite Roadhouse seems to be a hit on Prime Video, Amazon, MGM Studios, announcing that this Jake Gyllenhaal-led action flick got over 50 million viewers worldwide in its first two weeks of release. Wow. So that wow. means it's the studio's most watched produced film debut ever on a worldwide basis. Oh, That's pretty the good. image is hideous. <laughs> it's interesting because I was listening to some people talking about how the director Doug Lyman was really upset that they didn't put this in theaters and that Amazon made it direct to streaming. Oh yeah, I don't think yeah, they, so they didn't he, believe in it particularly mm-hmm, is what you're saying. He was like refusing to support it or whatever wow. or at least had some and issues. And look at it now it's yeah. this it's wow. Yeah. Well, it was a fun some... movie says Donald the Maine Coon. I've heard the same yeah. thing and that's what Michael Snyder said. He says it's a fun movie. Yeah. Um, the, there but there's a discrepancy though over what defines a view. Is it like how much of a movie do you have to watch in order for you to be counted as a viewer? So do you just click on it and then click away and then you're still a viewer? So that's the discrepancy about what well, is it have really that information of course yeah. at Netflix they know exactly mm-hmm. how long you were. And and by the way the same thing is true in YouTube. You know like you'll see we have 
you know, so many thousands of views on something, and you have to really get into the analytics to see how long people watched. But mm -hmm. you do get, uh, I don't know, but you ask a really good question. Obviously, with a film, it's a much different yeah, thing because you got to, you know, you, it's an hour and a half of investment. But worst remake ever, says RJ. Oh, no. You know, um, <laughs> I watched the original, which I'd, I'd never seen the original, oh, really? and it was it was pretty fun. It's funny to go back to these movies if you're if you're a smartass and just uh, kind of you know be astounded at what passed for a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. But uh, there's Patrick Swayze and Ben Gazzara in the original. It was really good. I I, I, yeah. I got a kick out of it. Is it who's the UFC fighter in this? Connor McGregor. Oh, Connor else? McGregor's yeah. in this. Yeah. 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 No. Oh. Oh. Gosh. Look anyway, so it's a big hit. All right, thanks for that. It's a big hit. We don't know how much of a hit. We don't know how long people are watching it or what the new standard is for how exactly, you know, you long you need to watch in order for you to be counted. But hey. Yeah, Kim's uh, saying yeah. that, uh, you know, we have to look into the numbers. She's not necessarily yeah. believing that it's a big hit. It's very interesting. That, that yeah. she's the, really... the science is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. well, All right. It might be a first for Amazon, not telling the truth. <laughs> this report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee. You can find it at CoachellaValleyCoffee.com, and it's the best thing you'll put in your Mark Thompson Show coffee mug. It's the truth. Huge selection of coffees, amazing teas. It is a treat just for you. CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. And make sure that when you fill up your little cart that mm -hmm. you do manage to at the very end type in mark t at checkout to get your exclusive mark thompson show 10 percent off and then it's a happy day when that thing arrives because you get the good stuff mm. it's an online card it's neither big or small it's online it doesn't I exist i know how it offends you when i call your cart little i'm not i, I i'm i'm offended on the part of other I viewers did. and listeners i, I, I did not. say that your rod of equity and mercy was the best <laughs> One. Well, it is. I mean, there's no denying that. Receive the rod of equity <laughs> and mercy. Right. You're awfully sensitive. I'm just I saying. Know. I am. Um, I'm sorry, Kim. I know you're. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Kim is really keeping me honest. I blame you. All right, Kim. Oh, I get it. All right, I got it. I blame you. All right, Kim. I know. Yeah. I blame you. Okay, Alistair. Kim. Please stop. Wow, this I can is... use these at home. Uh, <laughs> the I do one before show. you before you tag mm -hmm. out or sig nope. out or whatever the term is. Lockout was another one. It's That's the a radio lockout. term. Oh. Yeah. Um, the, Brian says that was not the original Mark. Um, the on was Roadhouse. The wasn't oh. it the Patrick Swayze one? That I wasn't thought the original? it was, but I guess I'm... Why are you yelling? Somebody else is saying there was a black and white roadhouse that actually was the original. Wow. So, um, wow. I guess we really sorry can't get enough that. roadhouse. Yeah. I mean, my bad. I'm sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was another drop. I couldn't believe it, Kamish, that, that my bad, I'm sorry didn't do better. God. It was, it's cool. too many upsets. It's a lot of my favorites that I've lost to. Yeah. At yeah. my detriment, like... Uh, Producer, no idea, got lost to Oprah. What is pro what is probably the one I hit the most too? So it's uh... yeah. yeah, no, I mean, by if yeah. you just went by frequency, then Oprah, mm -hmm. what you wanted here. Uh, I mean... Brian says Roadhouse was a 1948 black and white movie. There you go. Look at you, I had Brian. No idea. All I know, that knowledge right? showing off. Yeah, very it's impressive. It's the Mark Thompson show. Uh, that is the Mark Thompson show, and uh, we uh, what do we do? Uh, do that. The Mark Thompson show. Wow, we are late, 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 but uh, that's the way we like it. We pack a lot of info in. Take your time. Luxuriate, uh, Courtney. We don't have a guest coming up in the beginning of the oh, next good. hour. Oh, good. Well, I'm, I, this is a big story. I know, so. but hang on before you get... Courtney is uh, my lovely other half, and she's here regularly oh, with True Crime Corner, but look at social, social butterfly, butterfly beauty. beauty. Hi. Sheila Gall with a fifty dollar wow. contribution super sticker. Best Big, hairstylist in Silicon Valley. Did anyone see? I won. This is uh, again Sheila Gall, best hairstylist in Silicon Valley. Yay! And Courtney, come I on, know, hi. that is great That's news. Great news, Sheila. Big shout out. Big shout out to you. And yeah. I hope when they gave you the plaque or whatever else they give you to memorialize the fact that you are the best hairstylist in Silicon Valley and chosen as same, that you didn't cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> can it be, can be overwhelming. That's huge. I, I need and that's to get in my Silicon hair Valley. Yeah. Think about who she's competing against. I know. I know. That's huge. Sheila. And that she styled us out with 50, 50 know, big ones. Very nice. Yes. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, mm -hmm. so much. Really do appreciate that. The uh, Super Sticker Super Chats and everything live. Thank you for all the ways you support us. Mondays, we do it. 
It's True Crime Corner. Let's pay a visit to Mark's True Crime Corner. This is not a good neighborhood. I'm scared. Now, here's your host, Mark Thompson. Well, I'm delighted to welcome in my other half who has an abiding interest in an area that I have no interest in, (laughs) but I know that America loves it. It's the true crime expert, Courtney, everybody. Thank you. Hi. Very excited. It is weird that you're doing a case that I was intrigued by, not that I'm I'm just like, since I'm such a, you know, not necessarily following it beat by beat, the fact that I was interested, I thought, does speak to how intriguing this case is. It's the Klaus von Bülow case, yep, right? Klaus von Bülow. Mm. So um, can you, uh, now, Albert, did you get all the stuff she sent you? I think, did you send stuff to Albert? Yes, I did. I did, okay. yep, I'm ready. Thanks, okay. Albert. Okay. It's, I will say for this story, I included a lot of visuals. So mm-hmm. if you're listening, of course, we'll talk about it. But if you're watching, you'll be able to see some of the visual, you'll see all the visuals that I provided because there was so much captured. This was actually the first case that was televised and CNN had just launched. So CNN was covering this like wall to wall wall to wall hmm. when this happened. And the first case took place in, um, I believe it was in 1982 to give you context as to the time. But this is the case of Klaus von Bülow and his wife, Sonny von Bülow. Um, they were a couple living in New York and in uh, Rhode Island, Newport, Rhode Island. And um, he allegedly attempted to murder his wife twice, but he was really only prosecuted or indicted for the second time uh, that his wife fell into a coma. So we're going to talk about this couple and this case. So they were married in 1966, again, to give you some context to the timeline. If you go to the next visual. So, yeah, the next one is Sunny. So Sunny Von Bülow, she was born Martha Sharp Crawford, and uh, she was an American socialite. If you go to the next visual, all of the money that this couple had came from Sunny's parents. So Sunny's father, George Crawford, founded Columbia Gas and Energy. And uh, her mother, I think it was Anne or Annie, her father was actually a a, uh, wealthy um, entrepreneur as well. He founded a successful shoe company, but most of the wealth came from George Crawford. He founded the energy company. He actually had Sonny when he was 71 years old and died, yeah, in 1932. And his wife at the time was 30 or 31. Um, He died when Sonny was three and he left her at that time a hundred million dollars. So he left that to Sonny and Andy, Annie in, in 1935. In, yeah, 1930s. Right. Yeah. So a hundred million dollars in 1936, 35 is about as close to a billion dollars now. And so Annie and Sonny live uh, in and around uh, the East Coast. And then uh, Sonny goes on, she marries a, a prince from Austria. Um, and this, his name was Alfie. And this prince from Austria, they get married when Sonny's 25. He's a tennis coach or instructor at a, uh, at a country club in Switzerland. And that's how uh, Sonny meets him. Uh, his family lost everything in the fall of the Austrian Empire in 1918. Wow. And so, uh, but let me just say, excuse me. Albert, is her level better now? You had sent me, you can... Yeah, she's really good. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, go ahead. And so um, Alfie, Sonny's first husband, is a prince from Austria. His family lost everything in 1918 with the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He he goes on. They have two kids. Uh, If you go to the next, sorry, two down, there should be a picture of the kids. There's Ala, who's on the left-hand side of the photo, if everyone watching, and then Alexander on the right-hand side. So those are Sonny's first two kids. She has them with Prince uh, Alfie. And again, she is the daughter of... Um... Sonny is the daughter of George Crawford and Annie. Right. And she inherited $100 million when she was three years and old. And these are her kids. These are her kids. Okay. But um, she wasn't married to Klaus von Bülow at this no. point. No. So she divorces Alfie in the 50s because Alfie is a bit of a womanizer kind of running around Europe. Wow. And, uh, Albert, yeah. <laughs> Albert, how dare you? I mean, um, she had the money, he had the title, as, mm. as, as you would say. But um, she divorces Alfie. She actually starts a relationship with Klaus uh, two years before marrying him, but while she's with Alfie. They meet at a dinner party. That's somewhat shown in the film uh, 
uh, reversal, reversal of fortune. fortune. Yeah. yeah. So she marries Klaus van Bulow in 1966. If you go up, you can see uh, just back uh, one or two, you'll see pictures of Klaus van Bulow. His father is a Danish playwright, and his mother, I think, is a homemaker. He actually went to law school at Cambridge, had a law degree, and worked for J.P. Getty. And it was said that he would host these parties for J for uh, Getty so that he could meet women. Like he, he would bring in the women and host these parties, but he was his assistant for a very long time and actually continued to be his ass assistant two years into his marriage with Sonny. Um, but he meets Sonny. Uh, again, Sonny's married to Alfie. He's working for J.P. Uh, Getty, and they end up getting married in 1966. Um, they... When they get married, Klaus and uh, Sonny, they move to two different homes. They have a home in Newport called Clarendon Court, and they have an apartment on Fifth Avenue. Um, and I have images of them both. Yep. So this is the home in Newport, Rhode Island. Why this home is important is this is actually where the incident occurred. Now, this house is one of the last Gilded Age mansions in Newport. It was built in 1904. How big do you think this house is, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it looks immense. It looks, it's palatial. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go uh, 25,000 square feet. No, no. What do you think she is, a zillionaire? <laughs> no, it's 12,000 square feet. Okay, I didn't it's know. 12,000 square feet. It's seven, eight, seven and a half acres. It's wow. got 20 rooms. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's right on the coast, yeah, in Rhode Island. So there's a couple of pictures of Clarity. Well, that's where all the big money went, right, to this area in, uh, yeah, yeah. in Rhode in Island. Yeah, in the Gilded Age. Yeah, in the Gilded Age, yeah. This mm -hmm. home was um, built by a very famous Gilded Age, um, uh, I can't think of the word. Um, it was built by a very famous, um, uh, I can't think of the word. Uh, he's designing homes. Architect. Architect. Yeah. And um, it remains very much intact, actually. This home sold uh, for $30 million in 2021, one of the highest uh, price points for the mansions in Rhode Island. Really? So okay. they're living in Rhode Island. If you go to the next slide, they also have a house on Fifth Avenue, an apartment. This is a 17-room apartment on Fifth Avenue. They spend some time here. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> 17 rooms. 17 rooms, yes. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. Look at that floor plan. <laughs> Jeez. It's definitely large. That's on 5th Avenue on the 8th floor. That's on 5th and Avenue on the 8th floor, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So uh, there's two incidents. They have all this property. They have it's all this property. It's a big bang in life. There's two incidences. I'm going to briefly talk about the first, but I'm going to focus on the second. So December 26th, 1979, my they're birthday. At, that's your birthday. Huh? They're at Clarendon Court. And Sonny... Only bad things happen on my birthday, I'm sure. <laughs> they're at Clarendon Court, which is... Uh, which is the Rhode Island home. Which is the Rhode Island They would home. go there for Christmas. Sonny loved Christmas. She mm -hmm. would decorate everything in and around the house for Christmas. And she when you loved say it, she'd loved decorate, it, it. You, she uh, told uh, the Yeah, she had like help. 14 people there. Yeah, she had 14 <laughs> workers help. doing it. Yeah. Uh, actually, Sonny had a... A personal sort of lady in waiting, if you will, uh, maid. Um, I don't like to use that term, but lady in waiting. And this woman um, took care of her and loved her dearly and was actually the one that found and pressured Klaus to call the doctor the first time that she fell in a coma, which was December 26, 1979. Now, oh, um, it is alleged that Sunny took barbiturates or benzos, um, that she had a bit of a drinking problem, and she also was hypoglycemic. So it was recommended by her doctor that she not have a lot of sweets, but she did have a sweet tooth. So she's not well on December 26, 1979. Um, and um, I believe the lady in waiting, her name was Maria, she goes in and finds Sunny sort of very effectively asleep but not even really breathing uh, next to Klaus he's laying in bed with her and so she begs and begs and begs Klaus to call the doctor he calls the doctor the doctor barely rescues um Sunny from this first uh coma that she falls into for having very low blood sugar levels and when they do blood tests on her they find that she has very high insulin in her body now for someone who's hypoglycemic 
um, to have insulin that further removes blood or sorry, sugar from the blood, it can kill you. It is, it is, uh, it can, it would be considered a weapon. Uh, so there's some suspicion around the house, right? It's just after Christmas, uh, Sonny falls into a coma and the husband Klaus is reluctant to call the doctor, but honey, uh, Sonny does, uh, recuperate from the coma. And so, uh, she is okay. But a year later, on December, I believe it was 21st, 1980, they're at Clarendon House again. Wow. And Sonny falls into a second coma. Now, what's interesting is uh, she is in bed with Klaus and he gets up to let the dogs out. I believe now it's December 22nd. And. Um, he comes back in through the bedroom to go to his study because you had to go through the master bedroom or I'm sorry, the primary bedroom to go to the study, but he doesn't notice whether or not um, she's in bed, Sonny's in bed. And so Klaus then goes outside. He eats, he starts to have breakfast with the kids. He, um, he asks where Sonny is. They say they don't know. He goes upstairs. She's found lying uh, face down in the bathroom um, and she's, you know, not conscious and she's barely breathing. And then her son, Alex comes up, the one from her first marriage with Alfie. He puts his hand under her nose. She's barely breathing. She's very cold. And so an ambulance is called. And unfortunately, Sonny never comes out of this coma. So Sonny remains in this coma until her death. Um, when she's 78 years old, I believe it was in like the mid to late nineties. Yeah. Wow. And so there's a lot of questions in and around Klaus. Mm. Um, Klaus had a black like attache case of sorts. And in that he carried different vials of drugs and syringes. And so it was alleged that one of the syringes that they found had insulin on it and that Klaus had given um, Sonny this insulin. Also, though it was alleged that Sonny was using the bag to take those drugs that were prescribed to Klaus uh, with his knowledge, but without his oversight. So um, the children hire a personal um, investigator to find enough information to indict Klaus on this, and they do. And so the, clearly, the I guess after the investigator looks into things, the kids are thinking, They're thinking. this dude did it. Klaus. Yeah. He's not our dad. He's our He's stepfather. He's not our dad. But, yeah. He's our stepfather. Now, Klaus and Sonny had one child. Her name is Cosima. Um, but the other two children were much older than Cosima. And so they were the ones that hired the personal investigator to investigate Klaus's participation in all of this. And part of it was he was just really sketchy. Um, it turns out that he did have a mistress. She had given him a deadline. If you don't uh, leave your wife, I will leave you. And so um, there were a couple things about Klaus leaving Sonny. First, if Klaus divorced Sonny, he would get nothing. But if Sonny died of natural causes, Klaus got $14 million. He got the apartment in New York and he got the Clarendon House in Rhode Island. Wow. So it would have benefited him yeah. greater. He's got motive, as they yes. say. Yeah. <laughs> if she died of natural causes. So the first, um, the first case, uh, sorry, the, the, the first court case starts and he is found guilty and he is given 30 years in prison. And this is all in 1982. If you go down a couple, you'll see him, I think with handcuffs. So Klaus in his, um, 17 room apart, uh, apartment in, uh, on Park Avenue in New York. Uh, reaches out to Alan Dershowitz and he hires Alan Dershowitz, who at the time, and I think continues to be a professor at Harvard. Yeah. And so you're saying after he was convicted mm -hmm. the first time, that is to say he got the 30 years of the sentencing, then he reaches out to Then he reaches Dershowitz. out to Alan okay. Dershowitz. And he reaches Alan, uh, out to Alan Dershowitz to help him with an appeal on the case. So Alan Dershowitz is hired. He has like 15 or 18 students help him with this case. Mm. I've heard of two other notable people that helped. One is Elliot Spitzer, was a student who participated in this. And the second is Jim Kramer. 
Um, and so 15 to 18 students, if you watch a uh, reversal of fortune, they had like a month and a half to put together the appeal. Um, but really they weren't fighting for his innocence. They were looking at uh, issues with the initial um, defense team and prosecution and issues with how uh, the case was uh, litigated. Right. And so they came up with enough they're trying Cause to get him off concern. on a technicality, in mm -hmm. effect. Yeah, exactly. And so he wins the appeal. He has a second case in court, and he is acquitted. So in 1985, June 10th, if you go down, he is acquitted of the attempted murder of his wife. This is the jury that's going um, to look at Clarendon, uh, Clarendon Court. Um, yeah, they made a trip to the mm -hmm. crime scene. In Rhode Island, in effect, this is the, the second uh, case. Yeah, this is the second case. And then if you go down, so he's acquitted on June 10th, 1985. Albert, is there a um, picture there, please, sir? Yep. Yeah, thank you. And then, uh, so he ends up moving, he lives actually in um, Sonny's apartment, in his apartment in New York. He has another new girlfriend not the original mistress that he had. He has a new girlfriend, he lives there. And um, the stepchildren file a $50 million lawsuit civilly against him, which he loses. So in that lawsuit, Klaus gives up any, um, any uh, I don't know, ownership or, or, or interest in the estate of Sonny Von Bulow. And what happens is Cosima gets part of that $100 million fortune, and she ends up taking care of her father for the rest of his life. So again, for the, just because the names can get a little bit mm -hmm. overwhelming, the name you mentioned, what's her name, Koza was it? Kozima. Kozima is the natural daughter of Klaus and Sonny. Yes. She, even though Klaus essentially he pulls out of the whole he pulls out of the of the trust or the the you know anything having to do with uh sunny which yeah. makes it kind of look like hey look i i'm getting out of this yeah. i'm not i wasn't in this for the money i didn't kill her or whatever but yeah. then you're saying the daughter actually takes care of him to the tune of how much well, she would have been. I, I don't know exactly. She would have. She would have inherited. I mean, if she had gotten a third, then she would have been. You know, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of millions. Yeah. yeah. And like, um, yes. And it's funny that you not funny, but that you mention that is that a lot of people are like, well, he gave up any rights to the to the tr to the fund, to the trust fund, to the um, you know any of Sonny's wealth. But actually, Cosima had a much larger interest once he left and then took care of him. So he ends up moving to London. And Cosima, I think, married an Italian prince and lives in Europe. Wow. But um, then we get to, I'll go quickly to um, Reversal of Fortune. So this movie was um, came out in 1990. This I didn't realize that this movie was based on an Alan Dershowitz book. And so Alan Dershowitz wrote about the trial. So anybody who's seen the movie knows that the movie, the majority of the film is about the trial. It's not really about the relationship between Klaus and right. um, and Sonny. In parts it is, but it really is about the appeal of the case. And um, Alan Dershowitz makes the whole press tour, uh, as does Klaus. There's a really interesting article that's written by Dominic Dunn in Vanity Fair. I included some of the pictures. Yeah, so, so what you're seeing now is the Vanity Fair cover. That is Klaus mm -hmm. von Bülow, isn't it? Or yes, is that, and that's yeah. his girlfriend, the second girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. So this is not Jeremy Irons. We're talking about no. the actual people here before we get to reversal of uh, yeah. fortune. And on the left, you can see the People magazine piece that is titled A Shattered Family, yes. in which you see the kids and you see Klaus and I guess that's his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is his girlfriend. Um, her She was played by Christine Baranski in the film. Uh, she had her own money, um, but she, uh, she uh, sh shocker that she doesn't end up with Klaus. Uh, there's a couple pictures that I included yeah. from the Dominic Dunn article only because they were great shots. This, this is was, key, this is the picture of yeah. Klaus von Bülow that I think we all remember who were alive at the time. And it was but, shot by Helmut Newton. So and, that, um, there you go. Yeah, so somewhat famously, this shot and then the shot of his girlfriend in the sort of black leather was, was shot by Helmut Newton in that um, apartment in New York. 
Um, but there's a couple photos if you go through. Um, there's a photo of Cosima and her dad. Yeah, if you the... go down one, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there it is. You got it. I'm sorry. Yeah, you this had is it. another I, photo. I apologize. I'm yeah. watching. I'm looking at two screens, so I can't this tell which an... one is on. Yeah. yeah, there they are. So that's that's Cosima and the and and, and, and uh, Klaus. Klaus. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the next one is him and his girlfriend. Um, and then the, actually, if you go down, there's a photo. This is uh, Sunny, and then uh, a couple shots of Sunny. This is uh, Klaus and Sunny in Happier Times. Uh, but the last one is, this is Klaus in the apartment on Park Avenue celebrating, if you will, uh, just after uh, the, the acquittal. acquittal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the far left, that's his original mistress from the first trial. Actually, that might have been from the second. She she testified in both, but that's his original mistress. She was, was a soap opera actress. Um, and so, yeah, it's wow. it's really eerie and strange and, and, and somewhat bizarre what the sort of press tour that he went on Look, after this happened go down one more though albert and you'll see that's jeremy irons on the right and glenn close on the left they yes. close playing sunny and irons playing klaus and i believe he won the academy award for that didn't he or uh, i thought maybe or was nominated. yeah yes 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 yeah. he won i don't know that she did but he won yeah, yeah. it was a it was a really interesting film it felt I told Mark this, now that we know who Ellen Dershowitz turned out to be after 1990, it was very strange to watch a film that was celebrating in some aspect his work on this case um, and the novel, uh, but the film was really well written and was really interesting. Well, did well he done. write, he wrote the book. He wrote the book and then- Yeah, go back, go was, down one more, Albert, and yeah, you'll see, Reversal of Fortune. Mm -hmm. There you see it on the left. It's written by Alan Dershowitz and so, the movie, as he you might imagine, of kind of yeah. glorifies Selling Alan Dershowitz. <laughs> that's, um, I think, is it Ron Silver here on the right-hand side? Oh, yeah, that's Ron him. Silver, sure. And then if you look on the left, the woman in denim, that's Fel Felicity Huffman. I see. She actually, wow. There's quite a few famous people in this film. No, it was a big movie, and yeah. it was a good movie, and continues to be. I want to see it. And they run the different scenarios for you so that it's a little, they keep it, kind of in the gray area as to what actually happened. Go to the next uh, yeah. slide too, Albert, and you can see uh, Dershowitz was out there <laughs> pumping it. He you? was out there pumping it. And yeah. is that Bryant Gumbel? Bryant Gumbel, yeah. 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 So I, I don't know, I took this shot because it felt very, uh, very, very 80s. This was 1986. You can see the screens kind of. Uh, but there's also, uh, to static. the point, uh, very much it was in the, I've got to move uh, along here pretty yeah. quickly. So uh, it was very much in the zeitgeist, yeah. And there were a lot of references to um, the Von Bulow trial. And I think if you go to the next one, Albert, there were references in. Yeah, so more contemporary culture. I, you know, I, I'm only re referencing these because these were really popular TV shows in which there were references to Sonny Von Bulow. So there was twice in Will and Grace, once in Seinfeld and once in Gilmore Girls. Yeah, so if you go down, so. you'll see the Seinfeld reference, yep. Albert, please, if you would. Um, yeah. And yeah. then the last part of this was just that the mansion sold in uh, just in 2021 for $30 million. These are more recent pictures of the estate. Wow, just yeah. unreal. So uh, very simply, Klaus von Bülow may have gotten away with murder. Certainly if the first jury looking at evidence felt that he did get a that he was guilty of killing his wife. Yeah, I I mean, yes. Is that wrong? No, no, no. I mean, it, it's it's interesting. I the Alan Dershowitz came in and sort of disproved or created doubt in a lot of the evidence that was used in the first trial. There was also a confusion of notes. So the prosecutor in the first trial and the and the personal investigator that the family hired didn't share the notes that they took for interviews with the family members and other people related to the crime. Oh, sure, sure. And that became an issue and part of the appeal. Hmm. So um, there, there were huge lapses in uh, the defense team on that first trial and that led to the second trial. And there was enough doubt. So they weren't trying to prove him innocent, they were just creating doubt in the situation and that effectively got him the acquittal. It's a remarkable thing. Well, uh, Courtney, you've done it again. You've taken us through. Uh, I know it was that, long, uh, but no, it's, it was, uh, it's detailed. It's a really I didn't remember detailed, a lot of it. I, didn't, uh, I, I, I had no, not the, the mistress and another mistress and all. I, I really didn't have any kind of feel for that. So, um, 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, just because I got a mistress doesn't mean he was killing his wife. You know what I mean? They're, they're guys running around all the time with mistresses who aren't going to aren't trying to kill their wives. It, but it it is weird how you know. Uh, yeah. Even the timing on, you know, and the way that she falls into a coma and the uh, overdoing the insulin. I mean, it's all just pretty, come yeah. on, man. And like he, he didn't call the doctor in the first time. Yeah, he didn't really want to because, call the doctor. Yeah. And I then mean, in please. the second incident, he refused to have her lady in waiting or maid come with them. So he was trying to extract her from the situation. Yeah, and in I, fact, I the delay in time is what put her into this deep coma. So... Also, I mean, men have mistresses, but not a lot of men are mil married to a woman worth a billion dollars who, if they do divorce, get nothing. So. Right, right. There's that. You're do right. We, no, he absolutely had motive. I see. Do we uh, wonder, Kim, anything before I excuse the witness? Yeah. Do we wonder why these these um, prenups are written in such a way that you get more if the person dies? I mean, doesn't it make more <laughs> sense to say, hey, that is listen, a pretty big loophole true. that they- so divorced we'll get yeah. you a few million yeah. you'll be all right you don't need to kill me it's okay it's true. right <laughs> I mean, maybe that wasn't the best and brightest i'm just it's thinking true. Yeah. That's uh, true edward says courtney is the theme mo money mo problems yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, sure it does seem, seem that like way. that yeah. i mean um there's there's the family was very upset with reversal of fortune because if you do watch the film she seems like this woman whose life is filled with issues. And this is why she's an alcoholic who uses barbiturates. And she, in fact, sort of puts herself into this coma. But, um, you know, her name was Sunny. She was called Sunny because of her disposition. So Yeah, she loved know. to entertain. Yeah. And, uh, she, you know, I'm sorry. It's so, a, many, so many, so uh, many. Seems to me like the guy was clearly guilty. Yeah. Uh, Courtney, thank you. Well, and thank you for having me. That is True Crime Corner for today. Yeah. True Crime Corner, only on The Mark Thompson Show. Uh, Courtney, thank you. And uh, sorry about your bracket blowing up. Uh, what was the thing that Courtney had in Mark's Madness? She had it to go all the way. And uh, what um, has bitten the dust, right? What? what right, Kamish? Uh, what, what is out of the game, I think, uh, completely? Yeah, it, it's so, eliminated. Uh, so very so. unfortunate. It is unfortunate. I mean, it's like... Um, it's like losing a family member in a, in, a, in a weird sense. Yeah. I really thought what was going all the way. Uh, anything to note from the first hour before I get to the second hour on Mark's Madness Commission? I am checking that right now as we speak yeah. um, with the results. And I will share that to, with you in a moment. Kamish is uh, distracted today, I think. I'm getting he's distracted. There's a lot of stuff going no, on. I was clearing out the, <clears throat> the slides <laughs> that we were going through. <laughs> I am... Uh, Albert, thank you. So the deal is that in the first hour, and this continues until midnight tonight, we have these two. We have Why Are You Yelling? Why Are You Yelling? And we have Seriously... Seriously, what the f***? And it, this is a close one. Seriously, what the F is trailing... Seriously, what the f***? 42% to... Why Are You Yelling? 57% for Why Are You Yelling? So uh, we will continue with the voting in the community section of our YouTube channel on that until midnight tonight. So that's um, that's the way that's going down. Now, we have a fresh hour starting, even though it's a little shy of an hour, so let's do it. Now, I can't believe it! Mark's Madness. You'll vote now live. And you'll vote for one of these two. There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. Idiots, or... Where are my weed smokers at? Oh, it's idiots. There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. Or... Where are my weed smokers you at? You can only vote for one. Only one can carry on the dream. You can vote live now in the chat until midnight in the community section. So, uh, go for it. Ah, this is a tough one. I mean, 30 to 35% of idiots has uh, captured a lot of support, I think, because people agree with the statement. You know what I mean, Albert? Yeah, in the early voting right now, it's leaning towards that. So the Cinderella run may continue for Yeah, uh, I mean, right, idiots, exactly. But... I think that 30, I'm telling you, that 30 to 35% of idiots, people are just so... Um, they're so leaning for they love avila too and it's jim avila the award-winning journalist so yeah he's the cinderella story but he is up against a perennial winner 
So again, you'll vote for... There's always been mm. in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. So that's the drop that goes up against... Uh, Where are my weed smokers at? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you got until uh, top of the hour, a little after top of the hour, to vote on one of them to the next round in Mark's Madness. And... Uh, as I say, until midnight tonight in the community section of our YouTube channel, if you go to the community section, you'll, you'll find on the YouTube channel shorts, live videos, community. Go there, click on that, and you'll be able to vote until midnight. Kim's News, Karen Dawn joins us with a word about animals as well a little bit later this hour. I um, have some, I don't know if I'm able to get to all of this today, but um, I've got some great stuff in the next couple of days. Um you see the golden parachute, by the way, that the Boeing CEO is now going to get, and they're, How they're putting much together. How money is he going to get? I think it's fifty-three million for yeah. the failure. Yeah, and then fifty-three the guy- million dollars for totally jacking up that company. Yeah, it, wow. it's true. What? I know. I'm sorry, but this is uh, this is corporate America at that level. The other thing is that the guy he replaced at Boeing. He got a $65 million golden parachute. So, you know, golden parachutes is what they do in the in the, the C-suites, right? Um, smash the like button smash like a boss because we rod. don't have that kind of money around here and we need uh, your support. So thanks for a free thumbs up. And thanks to those of you who share the show on your social media or you share a video. Maybe you see a short, maybe you see a video. It helps to uh, share it. So... Um, yeah, Luis, we had, uh, we, we, we punched in on that a couple of times. So Luis, we love you. Thank you. Uh, Billy chipping in for a camera for Courtney. Yeah. Well, uh, truthfully, she doesn't want a big shout out. <laughs> she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to use a camera. So it's kind of her thing. She refer, you know, she's looking at the, the screens that Albert is running, et cetera. So she's trying to balance those visuals. And I think she feels like she can't keep eye contact with the camera. I don't know exactly how it works. Um, all right. Uh, much to do. We are... Uh, the Marks. No, 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 no. Yeah. The, uh, we're still yeah. in the uh, we're in the thick of it. I wanted to hit my um, little organ music. Okay. By the way, uh, speaking of organ music, Kamish, you saw the Dodgers are playing the Giants, right? I mean... This is where I, I mentioned organ music because at Dodger Stadium, they got that organist. They still very yeah. old school, you know. And um, they've got that uh, Shohei Otani uh, commish. It's kind of a big deal. It kind of, it's it's been so uninspiring this year with all, all the drama behind mm. him. So it's kind of going it. in our favor. We would split the series with the Padres, but um, I'm feeling good about the my Giants. Really How about uh, the Asian sensation on the giants albert Jung Lee, yeah the center fielder he's uh he was great he had that beer shower after his first home run yeah he, he had a great great the giants. yeah, yeah. We're, everybody seems to like us right now so <laughs> completely opposite it, of does, the it does feel as though the world is ours which is kind of cool so all right uh mark thompson show <laughs> the mark thompson show On The Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. Crews are taking what's being called an important first step along the road to reopening the Port of Baltimore. The Coast Guard said today it has opened a temporary channel for commercially essential vessels near the site of the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. Unified Command saying it's part of a phased approach to reopening the main shipping channel following last week's bridge disaster. There's a man in custody after allegedly ramming his car into a security gate at an FBI office in Georgia. Happy Easter weekend to you too, pal. <laughs> Video shows the car's front end smashed as it just sits outside or inside the gate area in Chambly, north of Atlanta. Officials there say there are no injuries. The suspect hasn't been identified. I'm not sure why, why that happened or what his motive was. The White House is looking into reports that an Israeli airstrike targeted a top Iranian military commander in Syria today. The strike took out a portion of the Iranian embassy in Damascus, and multiple outlets say the commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard was killed in that attack. After a collapse on California's Highway 1 Saturday, which we mentioned earlier, officials are now saying that all state parks in that area are now closed. 
This is a no estimated date for the reopening of Andrew Malera, Julia Pfeiffer Burns, Limekiln, and Pfeiffer Big Sur State Parks, as well as Point Sur State Historic Park. Uh, camping reservations all canceled, and anyone with a reservation will get a refund. The timeline again for reopening these parks all hinges on how long it takes to get the roadway fixed. At this point, all of those parks, all the uh, activities associated with them closed down. So you can't do it. I mean, it would be hard to get there anyway, because in order to uh, use the caravan, the daily caravan going through in the morning and in the afternoon, you have to prove that you live there or have reason to be there. Right. Sure. So, yeah. Well, this last, speaking of rain, this last weekend's rainstorm set some records. The National Weather Service says on Saturday, downtown Los Angeles received about one and three quarter inches of rain, and it breaks a previous record for that day set in 1946 of a little more than one and a quarter inches. Long Beach Airport demolished its single day rainfall record from March 30th with 1.86 inches. The 1978 record was a little less than a quarter inch. Other records were set in Palmdale. Lancaster and LAX so it was a big day for rain you know Sometimes, yeah I mean it, yeah. I mean my lament is that we don't save more of the water you know that we just uh, it, so much of it there's not an infrastructure to hang on to this water I mean there, there's some but it just so much of it washes away yeah. and I worry that these I, I'm a worrier of course <laughs> but we are fighting what is a de facto um desert in southern california so you're you know you're kind of fighting that fact and when you get these incredible winters you wish there was a way to somehow store that water and the last thing i'll say is I, this is i know weird to say because there's so much water but I, I wish there were ways to continue on the path toward conservation of water it is a vanishing resource and i think sadly when we have a big banner year like this year and even last year, I think slowly or maybe even quickly, we let go of conservation efforts. Yeah, it, it seems like so wasteful where you know you need it and then you just let it roll away. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean to be like the mature adult mm -hmm. showing up to the party going, guys, guys, please, you know, but <laughs> I, I just think, it, you know, you want to plan for the long term. One would think. Mm. One would think. Okay, the um, next story that I have for you is about fast food because today is the day where the minimum wage goes up to $20 per hour at fast food restaurants in California. Mm. And the what? Union, mm. I know, yeah. the union representing many of these fast food workers says, no, restaurant owners, they can't afford this new $20 an hour minimum wage for fast food workers. Ali Bustamante is with the Roosevelt Institute, who spoke during an SEIU virtual press conference and says, there's no need to raise prices or lay off employees as fast food chains have warned that they'll have to do. He said wages have steadily increased in California, and fast food profits are at record highs. Starting today, again, California's mandatory minimum wage for fast food workers is set at $20 an hour. So, I mean... I mean, uh, they're talking about the fact that they'll have to push that on to the patrons, uh, mm -hmm. which they probably will. I, I also think there is a fact that the food deserts that exist in many economically pressured areas and the inner cities of many, uh, well, Los Angeles, San Francisco, et cetera. I mean, there aren't a lot of options. So you're going to McDonald's because you're in a food desert, McDonald's or other fast food. And if fast food is the area that they're jacking up minimum wage, they may be jacking up prices on the menu, you're going to be ending, ending up paying more for the food you eat. So there's a, you know, a lot of sort of unintended consequences um, or inevitable consequences from this increase. The, it's never the owners of the companies who absorb the the loss of this, right? No, it's no, they'll pass it on, of course. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. kind of what you just expect to have happen. So, I mean, it's not a surprise that consumers are going to pay more and that prices are going to go up again. That's just kind well, of Well, I mean, to be fair, world. I mean, that is what running a business is about. I mean, yeah. we figure out how much it costs to run a business and how much it is to pay people. And on some level, that is all baked into whatever price is being offered to the consumer at McDonald's or other mm -hmm. business. So, yeah, I, I see it, you know, but there is inevitability about it. So if you raise the minimum wage, this is what small business owners are saying. Hey, guys, what do you think I'm going to do? 
I got to raise the price of my stuff, and it may drive me out of business. McDonald's certainly is not going to be driven out of business, but they will raise the price of some menu items, you'd think. Los Angeles County Supervisor Janice Hahn is calling for immediate safety measures at the eastern end of the Glen Anderson Freeway in Norwalk. She says that abrupt, there's, I guess, a very abrupt ending to the 105 freeway. Like, it just stops. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Yes, it just stops. That's it. The end of the freeway. You've come to the end of the line. <laughs> well, it led to dozens of crashes last year. Two of them were fatal. Wow. She says the terminus, or the end of it, is badly designed. She wants it changed as soon as possible to, in her words, save lives and protect drivers in the Norwalk community. Can you believe? I mean, what a poor design to have a freeway. Freeway speeds, and all of a sudden, bam, that's the end of it? Yeah, it feels like they didn't work through lunch on no. the uh, how they're going to finish the freeway. I mean, you kind of have to, you know, slow it down, phase it out, not just an abrupt end. Yeah. A couple of signs that say freeway ends. Right. Short, you know. Something. Actress Barbara Rush has passed away at the age of 97. Her daughter, uh, Fox News Channel correspondent Claudia Cowan, confirming to the news to Fox News Digital, Rush won a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer in It Came From Outer Space in 1954. She went on to appear in Peyton Place and many other films and TV shows, including soap operas All My Children and Seventh Heaven. Uh, she's really brought the golden age of Hollywood in her day. Uh, again, Barbara Rush has passed away at the age of 97. Uh, this report is sponsored by you, which means we do rely on you to help us fund The Mark Thompson Show. Please find us at themarkthompsonshow.com. That is where the Patreon and the PayPal links are all ready for you, and it's very easy to click through. And thank you for all the ways that you support the show. I'm Kim McAllister, and this is The Mark Thompson Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shadow Stevens. This is The Mark Thompson Show. Keep it to yourself. Here's Mark Thompson. Oh, yeah, everybody. We are rocking. It is our big Monday show. Thank now, you for oh, yeah. Mark's Madness. We are in the middle of Mark's Madness. If you're just joining us, only one of these drops continues to the next round. We're in the uh, Elite Eight, actually, and it's uh, either... There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35 percent idiots. You'll vote for idiots, or you'll vote for... Where are my weed smokers mm, at? Either... There's always been, mm. in this country, 30 to 35 percent idiots. Or... Where are my weed smokers at? One or the other. You can vote live until the end of the show. After that, you'll go to the community section of our YouTube channel. You can vote there until midnight. So uh, check it out, and... Uh... I don't know, the Cinderella story this year, there are two, I would say, well, there's one favorite, and that's Chit Chit Chit, I think, to go all the way. A lot of people have picked Chit 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 to, uh, to win the whole thing. So Chit Chit Chit, I would say, is a favorite. Chit Chit Chit. Going in, it was a favorite. A lot of people picked it to win everything. But the Cinderella story is 30 to 35% idiots. So right now, it is facing off against uh, Where My Weed Smokers, and that is a There's always pretty been in this country, formidable, 30 to 35% idiots. That's a formidable where my weed smokers bit at? of competition. Where, where, where My Weed Smokers at? It's a two seed, the second seed in the tournament. So uh, uh, good luck, uh, everybody. And uh, The Mark Thompson Show. The winner, uh, the Mark's Madness Ultimate Championship is it Thursday, Albert, or what day is it? Got to be soon, right? This week. Yeah, so the final four will begin tomorrow, actually. Wow. So final four final tomorrow. Final tomorrow. Which means the championship will be on Wednesday. Jeez. Man. It happens so fast. It does. <laughs> they grow up so fast, those uh, those drops. Well, I have a couple of um, quick items, and then I will get to a word about animals. But I promised you a story that I think is important because we in California can relate to this, uh, both in California and across the country. And that's the fact that more and more farmers of fruits and vegetables are saying that coverage has become unavailable from insurance as drought and floods increasingly threaten their crops. I mean, this is, again, as I say, from New England to California. There are the inescapable and immutable bits of evidence of climate change. And the climate crisis has created a situation in which farmers who grow fresh fruits and vegetables are finding 
that insurers realize they may have to pay out a lot of insurance for lost crop and crop that is essentially succumbing to all of these different climate crises related issues. And what they're doing is if they're offering insurance at all, it's incredibly expensive. I mean, prohibitively expensive. They cannot uh, possibly operate as farmers and pay those insurance rates. So small farmers are questioning whether they want to continue in the farming business. And bigger farmers are now having to build a completely different business model for the future. The um, a uh, study from Stanford found that rising temperatures are responsible for 19% of the $27 billion in crop insurance payouts in the years 1991 to 2017. They said that additional warming, this is again a Stanford University study, additional warming would substantially increase the likelihood of future crop losses. So insurance companies look at that, and they have these actuarial tables. They're doing the whole thing based on exactly how much they have to pay out and how much they're taking in. That's the reason we can't get insurance for fire and flood in California any longer. Increasingly, it's hard. So anyway, the uh, insurance companies are looking at this, and they're going, mm, don't see it. We don't see a business model here. About 85% of the nation's commodity crops, that includes uh, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, row crops, right? They're insured, um, according to the National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition, which is a nonprofit, um, uh, they are insured. In contrast, only half the land devoted to specialty crops, they're like strawberries, apples, asparagus, peaches, those are specialty crops. Only half of that is insured according to federal statistics. So, and I can go on and on, there are all kinds of specifics here, but there are millions of dollars being lost on these farms because of the hits taken by heavy rains. And uh, this is in Massachusetts. I was reading about a guy who lost a, a ton of um, his uh, strawberries there. The soil in Massachusetts is considered some of the most fertile in the world. And yet because of the, um, the climate crisis, yeah. they are finding more and more they're taking big hits. So this is an emerging crisis in the world of agriculture. I wonder if it's the same thing here in California when you look at wildfires in the wine country. Because we've had a lot of, you know, wineries burn, vineyards burn. And so it would be, I mean, climate crisis, but also natural disaster. And I'm sure that there have been more claims than ever before. No, that's exactly the point. That's the reason yeah. they're not writing those policies, exactly what Kim's talking about, because of those natural disasters. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, you're taking out fire insurance, you know, it, it's a specific thing, but there are a lot of um, homeowners who end up in a force majeure type situation where uh, insurance companies try to wriggle out of paying, or uh, clearly, it's quite clear now that the most prominent challenge to being a homeowner in California is to... Um, um, I see Karen waiting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the, is to get that insurance at all because they're, mm -hmm. they're pulling out of the insurance business. Uh, I've got Karen waiting. I will, um, I will put to the side. Um, she said sort of he's the, figuring out some microphone. At, uh, oh, is that what she said? Right okay, now. cool. Then I can do this yeah. uh, other quick story. So I have another. Um, the Mark Thompson Show. This is my agricultural uh, chunk. <laughs> it's the Farm Report on the Mark Thompson Show. Yes, the Farm Report. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Uh, so... There is a, uh, a tech company, agricultural tech company, that is figuring out a way and developing a way to find salt water resilient crops because there's a lot of salt water on the planet, right? Of if you course. could figure out a way somehow to have any crops sustained by salt water you'd be doing well. Now, there are crops that are better at surviving in salty environments. And um, this is a, look, there's soil that apparently has over 2 billion acres worldwide that is salt ridden already. And that reduces the amount of arable land. But if you can find a way to morph these crops that we are used to providing fresh water for into crops that would tolerate salt water, maybe that would change the arithmetic on feeding the world. The tomatoes, alfalfa, onions, and rice sprouting in this lab in Israel, they are sprouting in an environment that is thriving on salt water. Ooh. They are the non-GMO brain children, these crops, of a molecular biologist 
and a co-founder of an organization called Salacrop. I'm sure it's a company. They are doing well on this stuff. Over the last four years, Salacrop has been testing a seed enhancement technology on tomatoes in southern Spain as well, where devastating drought in southern Spain has triggered a, a lot of salinization. That's where soils become too salty for the crops to grow anymore, right, or to grow efficiently. Mm -hmm. But these Sally crop seeds, S-A-L-A -A for salinization, right, S-A-L-A -A, uh, crop seeds, uh, they actually have seen a 10 to 70% increase in crop yields during this time. That's a lot of money for these farmers. That's a game changer, right? Yeah. Spain is just one of the many places worldwide with a serious salinization issue, and this is a perfect storm right now. Years of irrigation meeting warming global temperatures and sea level rises, right? So 20 to 50% of irrigated soils worldwide are, are too salty now to be fertile. This costs the global economy $27 billion a year in lost crops. This is truly exciting. So a technology that's worth watching. And these are, I'd say, the big technological moves that you hope will be promising for the future. Because obviously turning back the climate crisis is not something that's a reality. So uh, as more and more of the land, the arable land becomes um, uh, plagued by salinization, this might be something worth watching. So, The Mark Thompson Show. All right, uh, everyone. It is, uh, is Karen ready now, Albert, or what's the situation? Are you? Um, she are she you... looks ready, yeah. All right. Okay. There you go. Albert, thank you. All right. Uh, without any further delay, this is a word about animals. Now, a word about animals on the Mark Thompson Show. And to share a word about animals this day, Karen Dawn, everyone. She is the. Uh, creator of Dawn Watch, which you can find on Facebook and also find it across the, uh, the World Wide Web. Uh, just Google it, Dawn Watch. Uh, it's the Daily Animal World News Watch. And you've been busy. I've been getting your advisories. Tell me what, to, what you would most like to focus on. You know, I was so pleased to see you mention Seja Shabbos Day today. Um, because just yesterday, uh, my friend Eric Mills, who's head of Action for Animals in Oakland, had a, a letter published in uh, the newspaper up there. And um, he quoted a letter that he received from Cesar Chavez um, a few decades ago now, I think. And I sent it over to Albert, who did tell me he managed to uh, get it, because as usual, Mark, I'm going to see if you might read some of these lines, because it's so pertinent to what we're going to talk about today. And of course, it was just Cesar Chavez Day yesterday. Well, as usual, I didn't know about this. And as usual, I'll just uh, stumble through it. Uh, here's an excerpt from a letter Chavez wrote to Action for Animals in 1990. Kindness and compassion toward all living things is a mark of a civilized society. Conversely, cruelty, whether it is directed against human beings or against animals, is not the exclusive province of any one culture or community of people. Racism, economic deprival, dogfighting and cockfighting, bullfighting and rodeos are cut from the same fabric, violence. Only when we have become nonviolent toward all life will we have learned to live well ourselves. Wow, that's quite the quote from him. Jeez. Amen. Yeah. And I think Amen I'm going to dedicate this uh, segment today to Eric Mills of Action for Animals because um, he is devoted, I would say, more than any other issue to rodeo. And what I want to chat about today is pretty closely related to that. And that is that last night, and I had something else intended, by the way, to talk about today. We were going to talk about Flaco, but, you know, we've been there. And the main thing I was going to say was that, indeed, it did come out that he didn't fly into a building. He dropped off something, some perch, and he was loaded with rodenticide, rat poison, and also with the pigeon virus. So we're, anybody really interested in that can look at our last chat yeah, about Yeah, but it's, that. that's, that's worth that's noting. Thank you, because he, it seems yes. as though he was poisoned at minimum. Yeah. 
Yeah, rat poison. And rat uh, poison. we've got to talk about that some other time. But this morning, I woke up to news on the uh, online about last night's 60 minutes segment and a fair bit of distress through the animal advocacy community about that. Some of your folks might have seen it. And I'm going to guess that most people who saw it from the general public wouldn't even notice that anything was wrong. And that's because we are so inured as a society to the horrendous treatment of animals that we don't even notice it. And, um, you know, sometimes we talk about the fact that, you know, a lot of our colleagues in the animal rights movement, they want everybody to go vegan. And of course, you and I know the joys of vegan eating and it's fabulous and delicious and healthy. But if we can't even agree that we shouldn't be abusing animals for our entertainment and I'm in this second I'm going to talk about horses how on earth are we going to get people to agree that it's time to stop eating chickens it's it's just it's not going to happen I don't think I really I do everything I can to encourage vegan eating it's but I just I want to talk about something where I hope we can all find common ground so last night on 60 minutes they covered the uh, Indian Relay, which is a uh, like kind of rodeo. And um, the photo that you see up there was one little second in this 14-minute segment. Um, basically, Bill Whitaker introduced the segment as the most exciting and inspiring thing you've ever seen. And, um, you know, 14 minutes of isn't this fabulous, but if you're looking closely or if you're particularly attuned to these kinds of things the way that I am and you are, Mark, but I think most people aren't, you know, you notice the kind of thing in the photo there where, oh, they mentioned that it's a, da it's a dangerous sport for men and animals. Well, for the horses, it's not a sport. They mm -hmm. didn't choose to be there. And it's particularly dangerous for them because, you know, if they fall over and they break a leg, they get killed. So it's horrifying for them. It's frightening for them. And it's incomparably more dangerous for them than it is for the humans. Yes, humans might die during this thing, but horses die all the time in horse rating, racing and rodeos. And um, anybody who doesn't know about general horse racing should go to horseracingwrongs.org and learn about a couple of horses per week put down in regular racing. But this particular Indian relay, they, it was presented as a fluff piece, like it's just fabulous. So ask Albert to share a few of these photos. This one here, the guy's, you know, about to get on the horse. And the second he gets on, we hear whack, whack as he's beating down on the horse and off it takes. And, you know, this is great fun. And it's not. And there's a few other scenes. And again, in the whole 14 minutes that CBS chose to show us, there weren't lots of these scenes. But there's other scenes where you see, um, you know, there's one where these three gals are coming in. Here's, oh, here's the children's version that Albert's showing us now. You see the size of this kid on the size of this pony. Besides the fact that we are teaching children at such a young age that animals are not to be respected, um, does anybody think this little pony's having a good day? And, uh, you know, later on at the end of the show, they show two kids on one of these ponies. So what I, okay, and here Albert's showing us some more video photos. And I want to remind people again, and I'll ask Albert to leave this shot up here for a moment, but this was not a CBS special about animal abuse. This was a 14 minute, 60 minute special on how fabulous this Indian relay is. But if we look with different eyes, we just see, as I said earlier, what we've become inured to as a society um, with what we do to animals. Here we have the horses on the reservation when they're not out um, being whipped in these races. This is how they're getting exercise. And if anybody's seen photos of the wild Mustangs running across the fields with their families, and then you see them on these reservations, uh, we lost we lost her mic it seems we lose her mic or is it just yeah me? karen your mic has dropped your mic has dropped karen i don't know if you can hear but um i i was just going to ask her about the indian thing so this is a uh, it's native american culture they're sell they sell the whole thing this is it russ is saying so they were selling the whole thing 
as part of Native American culture. Uh, you know, it's a weird thing because uh, the Native peoples in America and oftentimes worldwide, they had a relationship with the animals around them and with the land around them that was quite extraordinary, right? It wasn't yeah. reflective of exploitation generally. It was usually more cognizant of a relationship that had to sort of coexist and celebrated coexistence. And that's not to say they didn't, you know, uh, hunt animals, etc. But even in the hunting of animals, native peoples in America and beyond, uh, they celebrated the animal that was slain. It was a oftentimes a, a almost religious rite that they would go through with and the often, creature that they were had just uh, slain. Go and ahead. often used all parts of the animal. It wasn't like hunting for sport, where you just take the head and put it on a wall, right? A whole different situation. Yeah. So yeah. I, I come at it with the native uh, people's uh, view toward animals and disposition toward uh, the environment and their environment and the animals in that environment in kind of a sympathetic way, even as I don't really countenance the exploitation of these creatures. Now, to this specific, uh, again, I Karen's mic cut out, so you're having to listen to me a little bit, <laughs> but I would, um, uh, this is an abomination. Uh, I think the one thing that we can agree on, and again, I, you know, I, you know, I do the show, we do the show every day. I never mention vegan, whatever. I mean, I never, never. I mean, I'll do it when Karen's on, but otherwise, I mean, or to make fun of maybe a certain situation where I couldn't get somebody to eat, but I'm not trying to, you know, I know it's a long shot. Uh, I'm, the only reason I'm vegan is for uh, ethical reasons. I just didn't want to be part of that world, but I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head or judge anybody else. I'm really not. But the So this has nothing to do with that. That's This is my point. Forget about that, the way you eat, vegan, blah, blah, blah. This has to do with just understanding right and wrong. I think beating the crap out of creatures and exploiting them for your own enjoyment is unconscionable. And so I'm against SeaWorld and I'm against these rodeos. Rodeos are absolutely cruel to the creatures that are in them. I have a friend who's a four-time rodeo champion and he left rodeo. He said, I couldn't take the cruelty anymore. He said, I couldn't take how cruel it was to the creatures. So we know it. It's, it, it's indisputable. And so when 60 Minutes does this piece, to be fair, it's a, they call it America's most extreme sport. And to be fair, then it rises to the level of 60 Minutes coverage. That's why they were doing the story. But as Karen suggests, they do the story all happy and isn't it wild to see these people compete. Well, the people aren't competing as much as these creatures who they're exploiting are competing. Don't, again, mean to be the adult at the party, but it really is worth noting that this is pure exploitation and it's immoral in my judgment. Go ahead, Albert. What is the... Uh... Yeah, we'll try to get Karen back on right now. See, Karen, can you? Oh, no, she, I still can't hear her. She's muted. You can see that she's muted. You've got to unmute, Karen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I only have another minute or two, so I'm sorry. I just did my whole thing. Um, uh, I'm muted. Yeah, you, yeah, there you go. I'm sorry, and now I only, I, you know, people Mark, just, I don't uh, need long, you know what? It's funny how things just work out, because I don't know exactly when my microphone cut out, but then I realized it was cut out, and then I heard you talking, and you are so articulate on these issues and you don't usually talk about them so and you'll go at it we're almost like good cop bad cop you'll go at it at a level that I won't go at it is and talk about how disgusting it is so I just love that my microphone cut out and then we got to hear <laughs> what you well, think it, it's the universe knew what it was doing I did want to make one point before before we leave this issue I don't know how where it cut out and I don't know if you heard me talking about the Sue man who they interviewed and um he, it was very, very touching. And he talked about that he used to be ashamed of being Indian. He was never proud of being Indian. And um, Bill Whitaker asked him why. And he says, well, it's, you know, the alcoholism and the drug abuse and the suicide rate is four or five times that it is in the uh, rest of the world. And he was never proud of being Indian until these, they started with these relays. And my heart broke for so many reasons. You know, I have to say the answer to those very real problems is not animal abuse. But I was immediately 
re and also teaching those kids to abuse animals and also putting them in danger. But I found myself thinking of the most beautiful film, which I urge folks to watch, and it's not about animals. It's called White Might. <laughs> and um, it examines a, uh, it's called White Might Meeting the Enemy. And a young Iranian woman filmmaker goes and talks to neo-Nazis and she interviews them. And it's one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. And um, actually, Gene Bauer from Farm Sanctuary introduced me to this film. And his the line he always used discussing the film was that hurt people hurt people. And anybody who's interested in this topic who'd like to see a young Iranian girl go talk to a neo-Nazi should watch this film. But the reason I thought about it when I watched this 60-minute um, segment and heard from that Sioux man was hurt people also hurt animals. And we know that, that kids who are abused are more likely to abuse animals. And here we have a situation where um, these people who feel so powerless, um, the answer they're given is to take it out on animals. And it's not the answer and it's not right. And I... I actually, I did my loving kindness meditation this morning on these people because I was filled with rage when I saw these um, horses being whipped. And then I just realized they're not trying to do the wrong thing. They're not thinking about it. And most people watching this segment wouldn't even have noticed what the horses are going through. And I just want to say, can we stop not noticing and just start realizing that these animals feel pain, not just when they're being whipped, when they're taken from their families, when they're being exercised at the end of what looks like a clothesline. This is not a life. This isn't right. And before we start talking about going vegan, can we just talk about our relationships with other species and this idea that humans own the world and own every creature in it? Um, we have to rethink that. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be the, this evolved uh species and the reality is this is a this is pure exploitation and it lacks all humanity and it gets even worse in some of these other situations but uh karen thank you uh, again thank it's you. dawn watch the daily animal world news watch and uh it is a great resource that you can sign up for and will you know ping your email box and just tell you what stuff's going on and if you have an interest there are some revelations along the way i didn't see the 60 minutes piece so i i thank you for that uh thanks karen We'll talk to you next time. You. Karen Dawn, everybody. That's a word about animals for today. Join the flock again next time for a word about animals on the Mark Thompson Show. Commish, there's all kinds of stuff going on in there. The Mark Thompson Show. Oh, no. Just looking at the uh, results of uh, Mark's madness. You got two good ones going. We've got, uh, why are you, this is the first hour we had, why are you yelling against uh, seriously what the F? You can't vote on that anymore live. You can vote in the community section. Why are you yelling? I mean, why are you yelling is perhaps the OG drop of this show. Why are you yelling? Yeah. And it's going up against a, kind of an upstart that's made quite a push last time. Seriously, what the f Yeah. So again, that's from the first hour. And you'll vote for that in the community section of YouTube, which is where you'll vote for the second one in a short time as soon as the show the live show goes off the air um but we're in the middle of uh, again a cinderella there's always been mm. in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots that or uh where are my weed smokers at yeah it's one or the other so the cinderella story there's always is 30 been in this country mm. 30 to 35 percent idiots uh, but where are my weed smokers is at? an og weed is an og so uh you can vote on that in the uh, community section of YouTube, and there's a live vote going on right now. Kamish, uh, who's ahead, idiots or weed right now? It, it's, it feels like this is the year of changing uh, of the car. Wow. No, it's, uh, it's, it's looking like we're going to get new blood into this final Oh, floor. my Very God. Exciting. The Cinderella entry, idiots, is beating up on the OG where my weed and why are you yelling may lose this seriously I mean this is unreal go to the community section of YouTube and you can vote until midnight tonight and good luck I don't know uh, Albert I'm I'm concerned uh, the 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 cornerstones of my world being turned upside down uh, 
what's right, what's wrong, what's north, what's south, what's good, what's bad. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm struggling, Albert. I'm struggling. You're seeing a man in struggle if you look at me. Big shout out. Buck Meadows, depression is simply anger without enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Buck always says something provocative or I don't know. He always says something, that's for sure. Yeah. Here is the count. 30 to 35% idiots, the Cinderella story of Mark's madness at 66%. Wow. Yeah. And where my weed at 33%. Now, pretty close. No, I guess it's not close really? at all, is it? No, yeah. it's I not mean, close. It's, yeah. No. Yeah. Where am I what? working? I have to double, no. but I guess. So, uh, gosh, this is insane. So here's what I do now. I go to the brackets, and you can get an idea of who has a chance to win it all because you've got upsets now. So, Kamish, you know what I'm talking about. If you go to the leaderboard and you click, you'll see who has 30 to 35% idiots to go all the way because that can't be a lot of people. And you can see most people have chit, chit, chit to go all the way. Sally, look at Sally Costa. She has 30 to 35% idiots. She was out in front on this. Mm. Who else? Anybody else out? Yeah, somebody, SR. SR Donner has 30 to 35% idiots. Um, chit 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 is picked by most people. So, and again, Chit Chit Chit's still very much in it. Chit Chit might do it. Uh, Oprah What, you can see that I picked Oprah what? what. Yeah, but Oprah What is done. Out. Out on the bench. See you next year. So, this is kind of wild. 30 to 35%. Cheryl also is uh, 30 to 35%. So, there are really only three that I see that have 30 to 35% going all the way. Now, it might not go all the way, but um, if it does, there are only three people in that hunt. I mean, if Chit 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 goes all the way, which it likely will do, there are a ton of people in the hunt for that. Right, Albert? Yeah, and it, it'll be going down to the best possibilities there. So we have um, kind of a log jam at the top, and it's too early to tell. We'll see. It'll it'll drastically change tomorrow for sure. Yeah. Um. Very close, actually not close at all. That should be a drop, Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I've got to ask the merch people. We've got a um, request for um, merch being um, merch being included, like the merch phrases there at uh, getmarkmerch.com. You can see how there's a why are you yelling mug and the. Mm -hmm. So it was suggested that we do a – two things were suggested. The new mugs with the winners of this um, particular March Madness, Mark's Madness. And the other thing that was suggested is that we do stickers. So you could put, like I've shown you before, the stickers are cool. You can put them on anything. Like this is a sticker right now. That, that mug is um, just a mug, and we put the sticker on it. Mm -hmm. the Mar it so you can put a sticker with – the different phrases that did well in Mark's Madness. So if you uh, have an interest in that, I'll keep you posted. I got to talk to the merch people. So um, uh, I want a red mug. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, that's literally just a mug that we bought and we put that on there. So you can just grab a sticker. It's, um, you know, anyway. Um, there they are, show sticker sheets. And we're going to get you... I think I got to talk to the merch people, but we're going to get you some of these other things. Now, I don't know if you can fit 30%, <laughs> but um, I don't know, right? That's a, a There's always been in this country 30 <laughs> to 35% idiots. Maybe, maybe you can put that on a sticker. You can definitely. Um, maybe show one of those phone batteries down to 35% and then maybe have it say idiot somewhere, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, creative. Ch -ch 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 and chit chit chit, you can definitely get on a sticker. So, uh, oh, yeah. That's we'll a get... drop we haven't used in a long time. Remember at the end of every show, you'd say, uh, Oh, yeah. You're you know, down to 5% battery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I used to love that drop. And the, the great thing about that drop is when we were up against ABC News or Hard Out on the radio, 
and you didn't want to interrupt anyone, mm -hmm. like David K. Johnston. Like right. the last guy I want to interrupt is David K. Johnston, but Albert could just drop that. Go down that. to five percent yeah. battery. <laughs> and then, I could, then, then what I would do is yell at Albert for interrupting David K. Johnston, but yeah. the interruption was done, and then I could get out and get it to all the news. Out. Yeah. yeah. So it was, but it was a little bit of um, what do you call that? Um, theater almost mm -hmm. you know we, i had we to all get know. creative when i had to wrap you up too mark yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but me losing it at you for being uh wrapped up was one of my favorite things in the show you know i still do it try to give it you know a little bit once in a while but man it was great on the radio because you are up against clock more you know what i mean um so you're up against the clock um all right so I, yeah, I know we're at the end of the show, but I really wanted to get you this one other story. Can I do that? It was related to agriculture. Remember how I had to bail on the agriculture stuff? Yeah. Um, so let me just give you this one other story because uh, this is kind of a high end crowd, you know. My uh, the Mark Thompson show. And people who watch this show, listen to the show. I know you're high enders. Uh, look, this doesn't affect me anymore. I used to be a cheese hound. I loved cheese, and I still do love plant-based cheeses and they still come up with a whole lot of plant-based cheeses but i don't eat any dairy anymore and i don't uh, so but but i still try to follow this stuff for you guys because i know most people do and as i say i used to love camembert cheese mm. blue cheese and camembert the nastier the more stinkier edge. yeah mm -hmm. i love that stuff loved it so camembert cheese according to french scientists could disappear completely why? That's right. what yeah why could that be because of the decline in this fungus that gives the camembert and blue cheeses that unique taste smell color and texture this is a big deal don't they culture it don't they just have it apparently not i mean it is a uh a pungency that's in trouble pungency is a thing sham word. are they running over yeah. there Come on. It's because of a decline in the strains of fungi that that are in the cheeses, you know? So um, blue cheeses, they say, may be under threat, but the situation is much worse for camembert. It's much worse for camembert. Mm, no. Already on the verge of extinction. <laughs> the cheesemakers insist that the problem isn't dire yet, but they do say that producing cheeses like camembert is getting harder. They're, um, the way it works, I guess, um, is that the fungus is introduced into the cheese and then it's aged, okay? So you have to have that fungus uh, and it has to be perfect and it has to be aged and put into the, what is really just, um, it's milk, right? I mean, it's like a, it's, it's dairy. And then it's aged, and then you get that perfect tasting cheese. And in the early days, fungi existed naturally in the air, in the damp caves where this was uh, evolved, right? But now it's a big business. So cheesemakers don't do it in caves. They do it in labs. And this one particular albino strain camemberti that produces the perfect white rind uh, is something that is used. There's a microbiology in it. There's, and again, this fungus. Hotter temperatures, changing rainfall patterns, and more frequent extreme weather events are altering delicate ecosystems. And it is getting harder to get these fungi. And the world's largest dairy company and maker of the popular uh, President Camembert cheese in France said, uh, this is a real problem, but do not worry. We are, we, are, we are okay. We are committed to preserving the biodiversity and safety of the ferments, they say. Our mission is the sustainability of know-how and cheese heritage, of which ferments are an integral part. They are scientists, Kim. That's the point. Sure. So... Um, those of you who get the cheese lover daily, I'm sure this will be covered. Uh, the camembert, again, they may have it, but if you're a camembert consumer, you may notice that it starts to taste and even look a little bit different because of the lack of this uh, fungus. It's a real thing. 
And um, if you want your camembert as it is, you may only have a couple more years when that's the case. So. The Mark Thompson Show. I mean, it's the grim reality, cheese eaters. What can I tell you? We give well, you the good and the bad. If you have a little the story, good. I have yes. a little story for you. Just a little extra at the end here. The situation with the Boeing planes being created and delivered is apparently so dire that now United Airlines is asking pilots to take voluntary unpaid leave because they don't have enough planes and the flight capacity is down because of the delayed shipments of the Boeing aircraft. Wow. So in the month of May, pilots for United Airlines are being asked to not to take some leave time. What? You know, they do this yeah. to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for. Yeah, they do. What they the say, hell is going on in the United States of America? <laughs> they say we can confirm due to recent delays in Boeing deliveries, our forecast block hours for 2024 are reduced. And we are offering our pilots voluntary programs for the month of May to reduce excess staffing. Seriously, I, what the f***? Yeah, I, well, I'll tell you that um, I saw that Boeing so far behind on production, and mm. that's what has led to all yep. of these engineering flaws. It's front page story of the New York Times over the weekend. So we've had the whistleblower reports. Now we have it you know, well-documented. There's been a lot of journalism on this. This is no messing around. These, um, Boeing is an embattled uh, company for a good reason. And then the CEO stepped down. We talked about the golden parachute, golden parachute earlier in the show. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's, um, <laughs> at least Boeing is not rushing planes out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, JC. I Silver think lining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they are kind of uh, rushing planes uh, out is the problem. Um, what, uh, anything else I need to attend to, Albert, before, um, before I ease on out? You know, I have a very uh, demanding schedule, Albert, as you might uh, guess. So. <laughs> I think that's it. That's uh, we wrap up the voting. The voting will be in the community path in four minutes. I have it scheduled. So yeah, vote right. there for March Albert, thank you. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, I think we've um oh on the <laughs> on the Easter thing. Next year Easter's on 420. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my weed smokers at? Yeah, there you go. Different deal. Thank you. That's really great, Murphy. Thank you. Um well I have to say there have been some surprises, and I think the surprises in Mark's Madness are, uh, I think they are unrivaled in prior Mark's Madness iterations this year. So, uh, Kim is over at the After Party Live. Tomorrow, David K. Johnston and Trump News. Until then, I'm Shadow Stevens for The Mark Johnson Show. Bye-bye. Out of time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.